Hello dear learners, with greetings, welcome to the English Literature class with Faisal Ahmed. In this week we will discuss with a tragedy, The Duchess of Malfi, written by John Webster. Let's begin. So at the very beginning we will discuss about the biography of the writer John Webster. And he belongs to the Restoration era, or specifically the Jacobean era. It is estimated that John Webster was born in 1580 and died in 1634. He is an early Jacobean dramatist during the reign of King James I. His tragedies he has got two masterpieces, The Duchess of Malfi and the other one is The White Devil. And these two are often seen as masterpieces and regarded as the paramount 17th century English tragedies, apart from those of Shakespeare. John Webster's father was a coachman, also named John Webster. So his father was senior John Webster and John Webster, the writer, is Junior John Webster. So John Webster Junior was born in uh, around London. He has worked with many other playwrights, including Michael Drayton, Thomas Decker, Thomas Middleton, and Anthony Mundy. That means he worked in so many writings of plays and drama in collaboration with other writers, rather than his one single masterpieces and he left only two masterpieces and other memoirs. From his plays it is clear that Webster was a learned man but nothing is known of his education. His tragedies are, all, are very morbid and dark pictures they are also quite disturbing which seem to be the beginnings of the Gothic literature of the 17th century. Here you can see the portrait of John Webster. So now you are going to learn about the characters appeared in the text. First, get familiar with the male characters, Ferdinand and Cardinal, they are the two brothers and Ferdinand is the Duke of Calabria and Cardinal is his brother and the Duchess of Malfi is their sister. His historical name is Carlos, the Marquis of Greece, the Marquis of Jarris and he is one of the antagonists in this play, one of the major antagonists. Antonio Bologna, he is the hero of this play and Duchess is married to him. But in the beginning he was steward of the household to the Duchess, later he became the husband from a secret marriage. Delio is his friend. We will get when we start reading the text, we will get the first scene, Act One, Scene One. We will get these two characters in conversation, Antonio and Delio. So the next male character is Daniel de Bozola. He is a major character who in the beginning was the antagonist and later at the very end of the drama he became an Avengers. He was a gentleman and steward of the horse to the Duchess and a spy on the Duchess employed by the Duke Ferdinand. Castruccio is an old lord, the Marquis of Pescara, count and a soldier. 
Malatesti Rodrigo is a lord and courtier. Silvio is a lord and another courtier. Griseline is a lord and another courtier. And there, there is a doctor in the drama, the several madman. So these are the male characters. Here we can see a stage drama adapted from this text and the two characters casting the characters of the Bozola in red appear and Ferdinand in black appear. Bozola is revealing the secret marriage of the Duchess to her brother, the Duke Ferdinand and Duke became shocked after hearing this. Because in that culture, second marriage and in case of female was very unethical to the society and to their family, family status. So here now we will get familiar with the female characters and other minor characters. The major female characters and the central character of this drama is the Duchess. Of Malfi. Malfi is the name of a place in Italy. So he, she is the protagonist. Cariola, the Duchess's waiting woman, the servant. Julia, Castuccio's wife. Castuccio is an old lord, is an old lord. And the uh, Cardinal's mistress. And there is an old lady. The other minor characters are ladies, three young children, two pilgrims, executioners, court officers, and attendants. Let's go to the next slide. So now we will learn the summary or synopsis of the text. The Duchess of Malfi is a play by John Webster in which the da widowed Duchess secretly remarries. I mean marry, married again. Her brothers and her previous husband died before he got married again. Her brothers, Ferdinand, Duke Ferdinand and Cardinal, are angered with this message, I mean the secret marriage of the Duchess, and they attempt to discover the identity of her husband. The Duchess secretly remarries after the death of her first husband, and she and her new husband Antonio have three children together. When the Duchess and her brothers find out about Antonio, they banish the couple and their children. In exile, the daughters and two of her children are killed or executed by strangling. Antonio, Bozola, and one of the daughters' brothers seek revenge against the other two brothers, but in the ensuing madness, all of them die. So this is the very short summary of the text. You will get to know all about this while you read the text. I recommend you to read the text as the text is not so big so you can manage it to read out. So now we will go to the plot analysis, plot in details. The Duchess was born in Giovanna di Aragon, is a place in Italy. She married in 1490 at age 12 to Alfonso Piccolomini. Alfonso Piccolomini is the first husband of the Duchess. And she had one, uh, she had a son and heir of first Duke of Malfi. He succeeded to the Duke Dome in 1493, but died of goat. Goat is a kind of disease. In 1498. So the Duchess's first husband died in 1498. The Duchess of Malfi is a young widow whose two brothers, Cardinal and Ferdinand, the Duke of Calabria, are dis desperately anxious lest she marry again, for they want to inherit her title and her estates. She secretly marries Antonia and secretly bears a son. son. The brothers send Daniel de Basola to spy on her. 
He finds a document and learns about the secret child. This speech of news enrages the brothers. The years pass and the Duchess bears Antonia two more children, a second son and a daughter. Here we can also see a scene from histories that I adapted from this text. Antonio and the Duchess, they are marrying secretly. And Antonio is offering the wedding ring to the Duchess. Plot and details continues. An attempt to escape from Ferdinand's rage, the Duchess and Antonio make up a story that says he swindled her money from her and had to flee to Ancona. She takes Bezola into her confidence, not knowing he is a spy for Ferdinand. So here actually, Duchess made her husband Antonio and her elder son to flee from the rage of Ferdinand. And from the tile. And they, all, they also they managed to flee. But the younger sons, younger two children, and the Duchess remained insecurely. So the Duchess takes Bozola into her confidence. I mean, she believed Bozola, but Bozola was a spy, and the Duchess could not find out this thing, find out this matter. So at the later time, the Duchess was betrayed by Bozula. in the sense of the Duchess, but in rigors, in terms of Bozola, in the case of Bozola, he is all right because he was employed by the Duke Ferdinand. So she takes Bozola into her confidence not knowing he is a spy for Ferdinand and arranges for him to deliver her jewelry to Antonio's hiding place. And this way Bozola found out where Antonio is going to flee. She will join them later pretending to make a pilgrimage. The Cardinal is told of the plan and send soldiers to capture them. Antonio escapes with the eldest son to Milan, but the Duchess, two young children, and Cariola, Cariola are waiting women, are returned to Malfi. At Malfi, the Duke presents her with a dead man's hand, the Duke Ferdinand. I mean, before executing the Duchess, the Duke Ferdinand wanted to make the Duchess feel shocked by showing a fake wake's hand, and which, which he meant to be a dead body's hand from a corpse of Antonio. So at Malfi, the Duke or the Ferdinand presents her with a dead man's hand. The dead man's hand is a replica of Antonius, implying that it is from Antonius corpse. Finally, corpse is a dead body. Finally, Bozella comes and strangles the Duchess. A strangle that means suffocating, suffocating to death. Putting pressure with hands and neck, and neck uh, on throat. That is strangle. Cariola and the children. And Bozola asks Duke Ferdinand for his reward. The hypocritical Duke laughs and replies that the only reward for such a crime is his pardon. This combined with a long standing sense of injustice and a feeling of lack of identity turns Bozola against the Cardinal and Ferdinand. And, the, and he decides to take up the cause of revenge for the Duchess of Malfi. The cardinal confesses his part in the murder to his mistress Julia. And then silences her using a Bible. I mean, how using a Bible? He mingle poisons 
in the Bible. In the religious sense, like we Muslim read the Holy Quran, the Christian read Bible. So in that way, she got poisoned while she was reading the Bible. I mean, the Mistress Julia. And Cardinal was behind her martyrs. Bozola overhears the Cardinal plotting to kill him. Though he accepts it as what he thinks he deserves and visits the dark chapel to kill the Cardinal at his prayers. Actually in this text, Bozola is like a professional killer. In exchange of money or gold coins, he abides by the orders of the deep of the Duke but when after after killing mission when he was denied to pay the money in exchange by the Ferdinand he became an Avenger and killed them in exchange killed them in return Bozola overhears the cardinal plotting to kill him though he accepts it as what he thinks he deserves and visits the dark chapel to kill the cardinal at his prayers but he stabs Antonio due to the darkness stabs with knife strike with knife Bozola stabs the cardinal who dies then Ferdinand happens upon the scene and Ferdinand and Bozola stab each other to death that is all the characters died major characters died in the last scene Antonio's elder son by the Duchess appears in the final scene and takes his place as hey to the Malfi fortune despite his father's wish that his son leave the court. Historical context. Now we will learn about the historical background. The period in which the play is written is vital to our understanding of the play. It is important as topics of the time that were important to the Jacobian audience or highlighted in the dramas of the, of the time. Thus, in the Duchess of Malfi, Webster writes about unorthodox marriage to marry out of class was a social wrong for the Elizabethans and Jacobians. Inheritance issues are also a matter of national concern for audiences at this time. The Duchess remarries to Antonio, open for the Aragon brothers a dilemma of inheritance. So, in a sense, they are greedy, and in the other sense, they are very brutal. So, due to their status, family background, and blood, and the honor of their family blood, Aragonian blood, and also they are greedy for her wealth, estate, and title. They would not have any valid entitlement to the wealth and estates that came with the dukedom of Malfi. So this is a revenge tragedy, a revenge tragedy adapted from the Senegal, I mean from the Senecan style, Seneca was a Roman dramatist, famous Roman dramatist during the very beginning of the Christian era. In a tragedy as Senecan, I mean before the Christian era, 4 BC, around 4 BC. In a tragedy, a Senecan model defines a shocking murder takes place and it cries out for the revenge. In the Duchess of Malfi, the Aragonian brothers, Ferdinand and the Cardinal, takes their revenge to the Duchess for remarrying to her steward against their wishes. So the two reasons. One is she is already married, and the other is so remarrying is considered a sin in that society, and especially for women. And the other crime committed by her is secret marriage. Secret marriage is considered very severe, very severe sin. 
While typical tragedies such as Oedipus Rex or King Lear feature a great man who is destroyed by a fatal flaw in his character, Senecan tragedy is marked by a love of bloody, spectacular violence and a focus on revenge. In revenge tragedy, the ob objects of the murder are often better or so-called avengers. When Ferdinand refuses to pay Bozula, the latter, I mean Bozula, realizes his guilt. He becomes avenger. He repented for his sin and he decides to work as an avenger for the mother of the Duchess and her husband and children as well. In the revenge tragedy, the mother of the ghost stalks about and asks for his revenge. All the villains, Ferdinand, the Cardinal, Bozula, and even the hero, Antonio, are haunted by the spirit of the dead Duchess. Bozula confesses that he sees an image of the Duchess. And by the scene, Bozula also repented and Ferdinand became mad due to the scene at the very end of the play. In a tragedy, some character becomes mad. Ferdinand becomes mad. He confesses that he is haunted by the spirit of the Duchess. So this is something like when we commit a scene and after committing the scene, we feel remorse. We, we repent for that sin and in our psychology that scene of crime is a constantly constantly coming in our psychology in our mind and disturb our brain disturb our life and disturb our normal way of leading of life so in that way for in, in case of Ferdinand that things happened Ferdinand becomes mad. He confesses that he is, uh, he is haunted by the spirit of the Duchess. I mean, the Duchess spirit came to his psychology. Oh, why? Why? Why I kill my oh, sister? Why I kill my sister? No, I, I did a great sin. I committed a great sin. So I should repent. I should be punished. So Ferdinand's case was like this. In his madness, he tries to throttle his own shadow and cries, strangling is a cruel death. So now here we have reached the end of the lesson, week two. So I would like to recommend you to review this lesson again and again to learn these things. If you have any question, you can... Um, ask any inquiry in the forum discussion and participate in the forum discussion. Your lesson will your lesson will be allocated in the homework marking in your final grade. That is ten percent of the whole grading system. And forum discussion is completely isolated. Only for forum discussion, ten percent mark is allocated. Okay, thank you very much. See you next week. Bye-bye.